Well, glory to God, sinners and saints, welcome to another Sunday School edition of, uh, ah, well, I, I, what, are, what, are we, what are we doing here? We're deprogramming this Sunday School, amen. I praise God for the last five years being a truck driver. I've spent a lot of miles on the road. I've been all over Canada, I've been all over the United States, and I've spent a lot of time behind that wheel. I grew up in... Pentecostal, Baptist, holiness movements. I've got, I, I've been, I was in a lot of strict churches. But you have to understand where I'm coming from, and I want us all just to calm down. You came here to get a word, to know something about God. And more and more I find church hurt people. I have found grown children who have now, they're on the run from the Lord. They're on the run from from church, they're on the run from God and, and just all this craziness stuff. Today, what I plan in the name of Jesus to do is I'm taking you right into the Bible and I'm showing you scripture. And I'm showing you and I'm going to walk right through some scripture. If you've been church hurt, if you've been shunned by a church because you've been divorced or you got a tattoo or you don't wear the right kind of clothing or you got something going on. I want you to understand, um, I'm not a legalistic preacher. I may preach the Holy Ghost and I may preach holiness, but holiness is a condition of the heart and it is the mind. You'll never hear me preach a sermon against makeup, wearing any kind of certain clothing. I've got my own particular opinions on what should be worn to church, but as soon as I start preaching my opinion, I become wrong. And I know I feel the Holy Ghost right now want me to go ahead and get into this scripture and start and stop talking in the flesh. But you take heed to what I'm fixing to preach and teach here, and it's going to set you free. It's going to get you out of a backslidden condition. It's going to get you back into a church because there still are healthy churches. Amen. Let's go right into the scripture and the word of God this morning. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to go to St. Luke, that 22nd chapter. In verse 53, and that's where we're going to start in this entry point. I want you to get a King James Bible. I know there's a lot of versions out there, and if you have another version, that's fine. It's going to be difficult as we go through all these Bible studies and all, 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 all this stuff to follow along. I don't get caught up in, I mean, whatever translation you feel comfortable with, that's fine with me. But we, we I go into King James simply because I believe it's the closest translation the King James hasn't deleted the blood of Christ. A lot of people, if you look at the NIV version, it's deleted the blood of Christ in a many a places. So just be careful with your translations. So that way, if I say something different here, and you're like, that's not in my Bible. Well, it's right from the Greek and Hebrew scrolls as it was translated in the King James. Even the King James that I have here is not the original 1611, where it's got all the really, really hard, hard, language to sometimes understand in modern day English. But see, we don't get caught up in the trivial stuff. That's one thing I'm going to tell you this morning. We don't get caught up in the trivial stuff. You have to follow the Spirit of the Lord. When you follow the Spirit of the Lord, amen, you're following the good thing. But if you follow the Spirit of man, you follow the Spirit of an opinion, you follow the Spirit of darkness, you're going to get in trouble. Now Jesus in St. Luke 22 and 53 Jesus said in the words of red, When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. We'll say that again. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. And what happened right here? Instantly, as Jesus was taken into custody, this is right after Peter cut the ear off of the servant and... Jesus put the ear back on because, you know, if you really study that out, that was a capital offense. Peter would have probably, he would have been put on trial and given the death penalty for what he had done. But Jesus fixed it up. Jesus stood there and he said, this is your hour and the power of darkness. And darkness came in. Immediately after that, what happened? Peter after they took him and led him and brought him to the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled fire in the midst of the hall, were set down together, and Peter sat down among them. He sat down in the hour of the power of darkness. Now, you and I are living in that hour right now. When Jesus died on that cross and he shed that blood, 
This hour in the power of darkness is here. As I told my son this morning, when you go over there to that school, a lot of people are going to be enjoying their hour and they're going to be enjoying their power of darkness against God. And it's unfortunate because many of them kids in our public schools, they go to church. But my son and my children, and they say the church kids are worse than the sinner's kids. They say more things and do more things than the sinner kids do. It's because they're in staunch rebellion, because there's a lot of darkness inside of our churches. So I'm going to tell you today, if you've walked away from a church, if you've been church hurt, if you grew up in the Pentecostal holiness movements that told you you had to dress and act and shave your face and this and that, I'm going to get a lot of people mad at me today, but I don't care, honey. Have no hair and I just don't care. But I'm going to preach on something. Amen. The Lord is just leading me to say this. Amen. We can have the revivals. But I've seen more revivals and people shaking and shimmying under the power of God, but they've never been taught how to change that heart. We've learned how to have church. We've learned how to have an experience. But I'm telling you, we can learn how to live in the hour and the power of darkness, just like the world inside of our churches. And I've spent enough years now preaching and going and traveling. Let me give you an example. You have your faith and holiness Pentecostal. Very strict, strict, and it's almost like uh, in politics. You got your right wing, conservative, staunch. Uh, we're going to dress this way. We're going to act this way. We're going to look this way. We're going to believe this way. And the holiness doesn't even know that that they, 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 they've they canceled their own self in doing that because if you look at the revivals and the Church of God and all these organizations, they gather unto themselves like-minded people who believe in a lot of legalism and a lot of things that just shun the rest of the world and push them out. And this is like we dress, we act, we do, but the power of darkness has become inside of a lot of our little holiness and Pentecostal churches. Why? Because the condition of the heart never changed. We put an image of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. There is a real Holy Ghost. There is a real move of God. There is real anointed preachers in healthy churches. But when we take the mindset to live in the hour and the power of darkness as Satan comes inside of our churches through a charismatic movement, fake signs, fake wonders, fake speaking in tongues, you watch a preacher. Now listen to this. Listen, 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 listen. What is produced out of the holiness movement? I feel the Holy Ghost when he wants to speak to and tell somebody. Someone needs to hear this. He's produced the holiness movement in Pentecostal churches primarily have produced bad fruit, hurt people. And it's run them to the charismatics who has taken them all the way to the left side where the goats live to where they've rejected the Holy Ghost and they have let darkness come in their churches. That's why a lot of these churches look like bar rooms. They sell TV or they give away TVs to boost the attendance. All kinds of fake prophecy, all kinds of emotionalism with no substance in the word of God. They're not rooted and they're not grounded in the word of God. Now you see these churches on the left that have rejected the holiness churches and the Pentecostal movements because a lot of them grew up in it. But now the devil is... a. Uh, imitated the Holy Ghost, imitated the power of God, and made his own counterfeit Christianity, and it's in our churches, and it's in the hour and the power of darkness. I mean, I was told this week about kids I used to preach to in a youth camp years ago, but now they're all addicted to drugs, and they all look worldly, and they're acting worldly because inside of a lot of these churches that were so strict, those kids saw hypocrisy. They saw the hour and the power of darkness, and they did not see Christ from a preacher or an elder in the youth groups that we put on. If you go and you look at the survey that was done by the Hotel Motel group, when church groups come by and visit on a conference, the pornography viewership inside the rooms go through the roof. It's because we need to deal with the condition of the heart in our children. And I grab these kids and say, look... Uh, some things you see in church and some things you experience. And now even in these wild charismatic churches, we're losing kids because they don't even believe the fake Holy Ghost. So that was the hour and the power of darkness as the Holy Ghost describes because Peter himself went right into the hour. Because in this passage of scripture, we're not going to go into it on Sunday school. He immediately denied Christ three times. I'm telling you. We live in an hour and a power of darkness, and I stand up as a leader, as a preacher in our community, 
and who I am in Christ Jesus and say, I'm going to hold the line. I'm going to sit on the wall and I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. Be careful that we do not have darkness in our churches. The second I start preaching on makeup, preaching on pants, preaching on tattoos, amen, I can push away a lot of souls and they would be on their way to hell. I need to preach reconciliation and the love of Christ. Where do we find this stuff in the Bible? Now, is Jesus... I'm trying not to preach. I'm trying to teach. Lord, let me just be a quiet teacher, but I can't. So as I was preaching on Sunday morning, I'm telling you, you young preachers that are following me, there has to be something in your soul where you follow Christ and you reject the hour and the power of darkness. If something's wrong in your life, you get it fixed up and you get it covered under the blood and say, I will not live in the hour and the power of darkness. And the Lord's dealing with a many of preachers and a many of churches, like this one church that <laughs> right in my own backyard, I told him years ago, I saw a big old black hand come over your church and that hand looked like an evil, wicked, it was almost like tree roots and it just came and it crumpled that church. And you know, Know what happened it was the charismatic movement that went into that church there was bitterness in that church there was backstabbing in that church there was hypocrisy in that church and there was sin in that church and they did not have a strong enough pastor to fight to pray to intercede and the elders were all backsliders and the elders were a bunch of murmurs and complainers and they were living in the hour and the power of darkness and I'm telling you you get a Holy Ghost filled preacher that is not preaching for the devil and someone that is going to preach for the Lord you're going to go in there and tell people whether they heard it or not and I heard a lot of people in that church by telling them you're wrong I told a preacher right to his face I don't agree with what you just said I don't agree with what you just did he hasn't spoken to me since. My phone used to ring all the time, but now he won't. But I'm telling you, when you stand up in the hour and the power of darkness and say, I'm going to be the light, uh, you're going to live for Christ. Now, this is the devil's hour. So if you go over here to St. Luke, if you're a good Christian and you're a good preacher, you're a good elder, you're someone that is on the meat of the word, you're going to know in Luke 21... 22, it says, For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So, when the days of vengeance come and God pours out his wrath, wrath, God's going to pour out his wrath upon the sinners and on us preachers that decided to take it upon ourselves and make a very hurtful gospel. I'm going to take you right here in a couple of minutes, right into the way we should be preaching, the way we should be teaching. And then once we get the condition of that heart right, these kids, I go to churches right now that are healthy. I go to churches that are filled with the Holy Ghost. When they sing those songs, people hit the altars when the preacher preaches. And I mean, I got my own son right now. He loves a little church down the road from our house because he's like, Daddy, I feel love in that church. Amen. Because when you're not living in the hour and the power of darkness, you will be full of love. When you can endure this life and you can realize that suffering is part of the Christian walk. But woe be unto them, in verse 23, that are with child and to them that give suck in those days for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon his people if that doesn't make you have compassion for our youngins i'm telling you even inside of our own homes as parents we have to be extremely careful how we say things and what we do in front of our children now let's go over to second corinthians and i'm going to show you how to get some love in your heart get some love in your church get a ministry of reconciliation going that's how i preach it's a ministry of reconciliation reconciling a lot of people that are hurt now there are good pentecostal churches there are good baptists and there are a lot of great churches out there but a lot of them have darkness and when you get enough people together and enough bad preaching for a long enough period of time, I'm telling you, there will become a generational curse inside of that church. And the devil loves bad fruit from bad preaching. I can preach hell hot and get a, get a church. I can fill up the altar in the power of the Holy Ghost if you preach hell the right way. You preach love the right way. You preach the reconciliation of Christ the right way. 2 Corinthians 5.11 Amen. See, when you preach the right way and get to that heart, I never have to look at your outward appearance. What, what, what I'm going after is your heart. 
So, 2 Corinthians 5.11, it says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. See, if my conscience is not for Christ, holiness is in the conscience, because if the conscience is living in the righteousness of Christ Jesus, we we're going to have a hunger for the Word. And when the hunger of the Word hits, you'll read First and Second Corinthians, you'll read Ephesians, and you'll read this scripture. Paul was saying here, he was preaching a ministry of reconciliation. Amen. And he says, For we, in verse 12, commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat an answer to them that glory in appearance and not in heart. Let me say that again. Lord Jesus, help me. I, I, I never planned this stuff. It comes out of Scripture, folks. I, I'm telling someone today that is hurt and that is despondent and that is given up. And just you would love to go find a good church and you'd love to get over church hurt. Get some for, for forgiveness and listen to this preacher. I'm dealing with somebody today that's closest to hell. Amen. Man, I'm going to start crying in this garage this morning. <laughs> My, my buddy, old Junior Skaggs there, Pastor Skaggs, he told me, he said, I don't know how you preach in the garage, honey. I'm dealing with people that darn in church. So I got to stand here and preach alone. But I'm preaching for God. Because I'm reaching a world that has quit church. And I'm telling you, go find a healthy church. I'm telling preachers, quit skinning your sheep and killing them off. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat an answer to them which glory in appearance and not in heart. We can have all the revivals we want, people. But if we are not glorying in God in, in, in our heart and with appearance. Now listen to me when I say this, folks. If no makeup, and God, God gave me this yesterday. He's like, if no makeup gets you close to God, don't wear the makeup. But the second you start wearing the makeup to fit in with your friends or fit in the world, and that makeup took you away from God, that's the condition of your heart. And if that's what it takes, if you got to wear a dress, it's like me. i got to wear a suit when I preach. Otherwise, I could never preach in a pair of jeans. That's on me. That's my holiness. That's the way I honor God. But I can't stand here and preach against the holiness or preach against the charismatic or anybody. But God told me. If you are living in holiness, in the holiness movement, they had the movement, they had the power of God. But when you cross the line and you start preaching for appearance rather than in the heart of the power of the Holy Ghost, that's how the train leaves the temple right there, honey. Some people in the Pentecostal movement, I've watched them trade a dress for a pair of slacks and they lost the Holy Ghost. Go back to wearing that dress. If that's what got you to the altar and got you in the holiness, that's great. If that's what you believe in your heart, that's good for you. But when you try to make a church full of it, it's only an appearance. And that's right from God. Amen. If you want to drop down to verse 21, I could preach all day on this. Verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I'm always... Looking for the righteousness. Amen. If I can preach the righteousness of Christ to you and the love of Christ to you, and I can show you the cross and the glory of the coming kingdom, and I can preach the blood. Amen. Some of these youngins, man, you really make a connection with them. When I was preaching Sunday morning in a little church down the road here, I'm telling you, I made them kids stand up, and I said, I want you to know the church sees you. The church knows you. The church knows you're here. And many of you are battling demons and you're battling devils. But look to the elders. Look to the strong people in the faith. And never, never, never depart from the cross of Calvary. And if you do, there is forgiveness. See, we can preach holiness. We can preach this charismatic stuff. We can preach whatever we want to preach. But when you preach the Bible, amen, you're going to preach the grace of God. You're going to preach the love. And you're going to preach that we do fell from time to time. Peter fell. Peter fell in the hour in the power of darkness. I have failed myself in the hour and the power of darkness. But today, I'm preaching for God to show you the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Because if you back up in 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling, reconciling, reconciling. Amen. I love that word. Because I needed to be reconciled. 
I was hurt by a lot of churches and a lot of people. I had for unforgiveness in my heart because I was looking at the people in the church and I was not looking at Christ. Amen. I'll just preach it for a little while right here. Amen. But a ministry of reconciliation, that'll spark a revival. Amen. When someone finally gets that Holy Ghost back in their life, you might have to put on a dress again and wipe the makeup off your face. Some of you might have to put on some makeup to get holy. I don't care. But if that Holy Ghost is there the holy ghost is there and it will reconcile people that's why when you see an altar full of people crying and weeping before god that's god through the power of the holy ghost reconciling people unto himself amen i'm just going to read this again to wit which means a witness that god was in christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. I brought more teenagers uh, back to Christ uh, by just loving on them. Showing them some attention. Some real Christian. Now you, 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 you hear me folks. <laughs> you hear me. I could come out of my skin. These kids are watching us. In these youth camps. And all these little trivial games that we play and this and that. These kids know. These kids are not foolish. These kids are not dumb. These kids were created in the image of Christ. But we kill them in the church when we don't see them. We kill them when we shove them in rooms with people that aren't qualified to teach them. To fill them full of sugar and snacks and treats. And little lickies and chewies and all their little gummy taffy and... Get them all sugared up to watch a Disney movie. I've been in churches where I've seen that. I walked into a room one time where I dropped my children off in a big church in Nashville. And they were shaking it. Shaking it like the world. To booty music on a Disney show or whatever. There was no Christ there. These kids are hungry. Give them the word. Give them love. Sit down with your teenager instead of cussing them out and throwing things through the wall when they mess up and show them a ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's keep on going, folks. I'm going to try not to preach 10 hours here. Glory to God. Go to Philippians 1 and 16. Get this into your bellies. Get this fire. This is, this is going to help fuel a lot of things in your life. Philippians 1 16. This is bad preaching. It's when I'm trying to make a church full of people that think like I think instead of checking out the Bible. When I try to do something without a prayer closet, without fasting, without praying, without the ability to cast out a devil, without having the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I ain't nothing. I'm telling a lot of churches today, this may hurt some people. There's some big wannabe churches right around in this southern Ohio area. And they pride themselves on we're packing the church full. we got to add extra chairs and we got to do this. But if you listen to what's being preached from the stage, there is no real gospel. There is no real repentance. you got a church full of people thinking that they have eternal security and everything's going to be hunky-gory. Just come together. And people, amen, they take power in numbers. There is no power in numbers. There's only power in the Holy Ghost. So you can have 10,000 backsliders and 10,000 wet sinners that you baptized in the hog trough. But if they aren't filled with the Holy Ghost and living in the Word of God, amen. All you're doing is giving them a bunch of bad preaching, making them feel good about themselves. Amen. Give me a preacher that's going to give me some conviction. Give me someone that's going to make me go higher in the Word, higher in grace. Amen. Higher toward Jesus. That's the kind of preaching I want. So it says here in Philippians 1 and 16, one, the one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, charismatic movements, and now the holiness movements, and a lot of Pentecostal preachers, you don't preach sincerely. No, you preach because your daddy preached that way. And you see people, they have a form of appearance. There's some denominations that believe if you don't have the hat, ha, glory to God, ha, and we do, ha. There's preachers right around here. I watch their videos. I can't understand a word they say. Cause, eh, 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 that's a form. 
Same way with the charismatic, preaching prosperity. That's a form. You're preaching Christ of contention and not sincerely. But when you preach sincerely, souls will get saved. You'll be baptizing people and the church house will be full. You'll never have to give away a TV. You'll never have to put on a fund or drive or anything else. God will fill that church with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Because the Bible will not contradict itself when God says, I will pour out my spirit. But when I get my heart right and I preach a sincere message, message of repentance or Sunday when I was preaching on Daniel's excellent spirit you bring the people up to Christ and you let Christ change that heart Christ will tell you how much makeup to wear Christ will tell you what to wear on your shoes and your socks he'll take it all the way down to what how you should cut your hair and do things because God is holy and God doesn't need a preacher to enforce a dress code amen I'm just telling you this is holiness for one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, which Paul was saying, I'm trying to preach the gospel, but I got a lot of preachers that are bad preachers, and it's really messing up the ministry of Christ. Verse 17, I wish some preachers would, would do this. I've had to learn. I'm telling you, folks, I just didn't wake up like this. This has taken a lot of years and a lot of fasting, a lot of prayers and a lot of crying and a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and a lot of, man, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done this. But this is how you grow. Humility. I had a valuable conversation the other day. I'm going to tell you the most valuable thing you can do is have a man, woman, whoever in your life that will say, hey, mm, I love you, but I got to tell you something. I got people in my life that have called me on the phone and said, <laughs> I love you, but I got to tell you something. You see, because I came out of the Pentecostal holiness, legalistic, restrictive, everything you did, you're going to hell for movement. There was love and a lot of things I saw good in these churches when I was growing up, but there was a lot of bad because I saw myself the hypocrisy and the lack of love and the lack of holiness. It sounded good in the church, but in the parking lot, I saw a much different animal. In the car, I saw a lot of different things come from my own father who would get up and testify all day long about the goodness of God, but get us back to the house and beat us half to death. Nothing against my daddy. I just tell that testimony. He finally got saved and right with God. But I'm just telling you, if you show your children something in church and you get in that car and you're cussing mama out all the way home and you're fighting and fussing and you go open up a can of beer on a Sunday afternoon and watch the ball game after testifying in church and running around doing the Pentecostal 500... You're wrong. You're following a bad preacher. Another preacher would tell you, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Paul's defending the gospel. I'm defending the gospel. Are you defending the gospel? If you're going to a healthy church now, I'm going to, I'm going to get into this. If you go to a healthy church, that man of God's preaching, the singing's going, and our kids are watching us, and people are watching us. You're still responsible to defend the gospel and what was preached if it was preached from the Bible in the car on the way home and all throughout the week in your workplace. You've got to defend the gospel by living the gospel and portraying Christ. Philippians 2 and 8, I think I'm going to be done. <laughs> this all right? I know it's all right with God, so... Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> I thank God for the healthy churches, and I'm so grateful for the good preachers out there still preaching out their heart. But I'm trying to reach a world that just... The most heartbreaking thing for me is to watch how the charismatic and this crazy New Age movement and the Bethel Church and all of this wild stuff that's going on has really, really hurt the body of Christ and hurt our youngins. Turned our women into strange women turn preachers into strange preachers the reason why god's called me is to shine that light into the darkness because we're living in the hour and the power of darkness but i'm telling you there's a power greater than that darkness and i'm going to tell you right here in this scripture philippians 2 i'm going to, i'm just going to preach the whole thing I'm going to preach all, the, all this scripture. Buckle up your seatbelt. 
This is the Bible. This is what we should know. This is what we should have in our heart. This is what we should be reading, should be teaching, should be preaching. This will bring real revival right here. And it says here, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy. I see a lot in that scripture. Love, fellowship, spirit, and mercy. Glory to God. There's got to be some mercy in the legalism. Amen. There's got to be some mercy in the charismatic movement that has you believe and all you need is an emotional experience to get to heaven. I'm telling you right now, there has to be some kind of mercy in the Baptist movement that have come off the bits of the spirit and they don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give some people some mercy. Let them have the Lord. Let them have the gifts. Let not the Reformation movement cut off the gifts of the spirit. I'll preach you. There is a baptism. There is a fire. There is a real church and there is still a remnant. Fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Well, you denominations and your holiness, Pentecostals and all this, they've got 5,000 different denominations, Baptists, uh, you name it, designed by the devil. To knock us out of one mind and one accord. But I'm telling you, the reason why the remnant that remains are so strong and devils are getting casted out and people are getting baptized with the Holy Ghost and, and people are in love and the kids in a lot of these good little healthy churches are thriving and striving and hitting that altar and praying and loving Jesus. It's because those churches are still living in the book of Acts in one mind and in one accord. <laughs> Amen. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each other esteem the other better than themselves. That's the continuation of love inside the church. We don't strive. I'm not here to strive with no preacher, no denomination, even though I want to. Oh, my goodness. I, there's something in me I would love to strive with somebody. But Jesus told me, if you do it like Paul did it, amen, you did it like Paul did it in the book of Colossians when those churches were so backslidden and away from God and they were worshiping every bell worship thing that they could get their hands on and there was dissension and there was lies and there were hypocrites in those churches. Paul preached Christ, and he preached him crucified. And the blood will break every yoke of bondage. But you got to want to receive it. Amen. So if you're full of puffed up of pride in your vainglory, in your daddy's denomination, ha, 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 looking like you got Tourette's, glory to God, you better get off the pot because God's a chairman with his own hour. A lot of churches are living in the hour and the power of darkness. And I'm telling you right now, I'll skin you alive. I got nothing against video cameras in churches. There's one church right now, I will not name the name or the preacher. But I know he's going to watch. This video will make it right to his eyeballs. The devil loves us, ego-driven. I'm ego-driven, folks. I'm pride-driven. When I was a young police officer, I couldn't drive by a bank window in my patrol car with looking at the hair that I had and seeing how pretty I was. The devil will use that. I saw a preacher that used to preach under the fire. And he put a Facebook feed in his church. And he started trying to be a mini preacher. A mini whoever he wanted to be. Whoever he was trying to emulate. He changed his preaching to appease people. Because of that video camera. So if you got that video camera in your church. And you're preaching to the video camera. And you've done left your sheep. You're wrong. Just saying that, that's a tidbit from the Holy Ghost. You better take that and hit your prayer closet. Amen. We're going to drop on down here. Oh, well, let's just continue on. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I'm going to get all up in your church and your grill and your business. And I'm going to take some congregation members and I'm going to tell them there is a love. There is a way. There is a truth. There's a life. And if your preacher don't like it, your denomination don't like it, oh well, truck on down the road. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That brings me to something else. What's the purpose of being an evangelist? Amen. I've gone by churches that I'll never get invited to again because I pray for a message. I deliver the message. Half the church is like, wow, that was just for us. And the preacher gets embarrassed. Why do you get embarrassed? Because he's following the business model of Christianity and he's not following the Holy Ghost. Because when we become a bishop in the church, when we become a grand poobah, we sell out. And we start living in the hour and the power of darkness of a denomination. 
rather than in Christ Jesus. Amen. So let me look on your own things. Verse 6, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Sounds like the devil to me. Amen. You can take the form of God as a preacher because of the esteem. Look at me walking in. Woo! <laughs> Amen. Look at me walking in the Mexican restaurant. Amen. I'm the preacher in this community. Look at me. I got a thousand dollar offering this Sunday. Look at me. Somebody donated me a truck. Look at me. Amen. I got 300 people in my church now taking on a form of God. Amen. But thought it not be robbery to be equal with God the sooner the <laughs> When you become equal with God and you start thinking, I'm equal with him now. Look at me. Look at me. I said it yesterday on the podcast. God could care less. You mess it up, he'll find another preacher. He told me that. And the Holy Ghost said one time, you mess it up, I'll find another preacher. Mess it up, I'll find another preacher. As soon as I start thinking that I'm somebody, I've lost my humility. And I'm living in the hour and the power of darkness. That's how the charismatic movement came in. And that's how, in the Azusa Street Revival, emotionalism came in and wrecked our real churches. Because there's always been a remnant of people that were tongue-talking, Bible-believing, Jesus, Holy Ghost-filled people that have always continued on in the real church. And those are the churches I like going to. Amen. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. Servitude through humility is where it's at. I, you can preach with power. You can preach with uh, whatever. Servant. I'm going to tell someone here. I watch a lot of preachers that are very. We're just going to read this. And you, 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 I'm going to be late for work. I don't care. If y'all got to go somewhere, go. We've traded a lot of things. I've watched this happen. When we trade who we are and our identity, if wearing a suit and having a paperback Bible is what made you who you were, you need to stick with that. Some of these young preachers, they've never had a paperback Bible. Stick with that. Whatever works for you. But the second you start trying to change, and the second you start trying to fit in, and the second you start to do things to please the people and you're worried about church attendance rather than preaching the power of God, you're going to lose the Holy Ghost. God called you to be who you are, how you are, where you are, and when you are. Amen. Verse 8, we're done. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So if you take the moment of the hour and the power of darkness that Jesus said to the people that were taking him into custody, Peter immediately fell into telling a big lie to Jesus. I'll never deny you, Lord. But then he did. All of us are going to fall. But it's grace that we've got to run back to. It's love we've got to run back to. It's getting out of the ditch and the shame and guilt. I feel the power of God right now. Some of you, if you would just get out of the ditch, get over the church hurt, forgive the people that have harmed you, and just look at Christ as the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. You're going to come out of your hour and your power of darkness. Amen. Glory to God. Lord, I praise you, Jesus, for this word, for this, for this sweet, sweet spirit I feel right here. I thank you, God, for freedom and liberty. I thank you, God, I'm no longer in a chain or a bondage to any man-made ideology. I stand here with more peace and love in my heart for you, God, than I've ever had in my life. I pray this message will help somebody. They'll look to you, Jesus. I pray those that are in their hour and their power of darkness as Satan has infiltrated their homes and their minds and their hearts, Lord, that their conscience will turn to you before it gets seared with that hot iron of cares, craziness, and all these old doctrines and damnable heresies that have come in our church. God, I pray, even if it's just one viewer today, will see the light and walk to it, Lord. I pray for these revivals that are breaking out, God. 
And some of these people that have hardened their hearts, how you pour your spirit on them, touch them. Teach us how to live after the altar. Teach us how to live after salvation. Let us bind this word in our heart and not be a hindrance to the gospel, but be a help. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Woo! Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm just going to spend a minute in the spirit. I'm not turning this video off. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You need to learn how to praise, folks. I tell you what, there was a great hindrance in that church I preached in Sunday. The Lord came in and moved in a great and mighty way. You know why? Because those people decided, yeah, 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 we're going to run to the light. We're not going to live in the hour and the power of darkness. Amen. Now nah, you hit that altar. I was, I was on that altar Sunday night, folks. Not because I'm a sinful, wretched man anymore, but because I got a need, amen. And I'm praying. <laughs> I brought that need down to that altar. And I was down there and the saints of God got around me. And I was, man, I felt so alone that I was the only one that was going to pray over this need. And I felt alone for alone. You hear me right here. Someone to get a breakthrough this testimony. Revelations 12 and 11 says we overcome by the blood of Jesus and the power of the testimony. And I got down there and I was crying. And you see me take my glasses off sometime on that altar because the tears are just a falling. And I was praying hard and hard there. Because it's hard for me to sometimes be the preacher to allow people to come around and put their hands on me. Because I, I don't want you to know that I got needs too. Amen. But I tell you. I don't know. <laughs> there was this lady. I, she came up and started praying in the Holy Ghost and speaking in those heavenly tongues over my back. And I felt, I felt a breakthrough in the Spirit. And ever since that Sunday night to right now, I have seen a move in that need that I would have never seen if I didn't come and pray. I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for that need. The breakthrough in the need. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Touch somebody that's still watching God. Touch them. Touch them. Show them the Spirit. Lord, let more get baptized with that Holy Ghost. Let more people see real Pentecost. Let them see what you have for them. Father, touch these people. Touch them in the Spirit, God. Strengthen the preacher. Strengthen me. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> name above all name, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. Yes, there is power. Power, wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb. There is In the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Folks, I love y'all. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful week. Praise God for you.